Discouragement is one of the most awful feelings one can have. That feeling of being low, overwhelmed, and subdued by life's happenings can crush one down. And many times we feel this way. We can see life laughing at us after giving a hard slap to our faces. When you feel discouraged, you see no joy in living. The night is a pain and the day is a torment. Discouragement makes you feel unworthy, unwanted, and it leaves you thinking that you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. Not as handsome as you thought. It lowers your confidence and it makes you want to live in hiding forever. Now, we go through many discouragements and low moments of life. Discouragement due to a bad medical report, financial struggles, a failed project, a dying friendship, a loss of a job, broken relationships, poor grades, and so much more. Yet most of the time, we always rise up and try again. We somehow find our path again. We may not explain how, but somehow we just do it. I know many people who, despite facing many discouraging obstacles, they always try again with renewed energy, and they give it their all in the hope that they will win this time around. They beat all the odds to succeed in their endeavors. Now, you might know someone who's been through unimaginable situations, yet they face each day with a smile. They do not let life beat them down. They always have a reason to keep trying to keep fighting, to keep pressing on. But it's not everyone that rises after a blow from life. You see, life may be great for somebody, and then something horrific happens, and they never get the strength to give it another shot. That's where it ends for them. They don't try again, not because they can't, but because they have no way to fight the discouragement that came with the failure. You don't have to fall victim to the adverse effects of feeling discouraged. You don't have to walk through discouragement blindly in the hope that somehow you will make it out stronger. You should not walk as though you have no help, no friend, and nobody to help you. Now, as a believer, you have all the weapons you need to fight the calamities of life. The Bible is the wisest consultant you can turn to in all phases of your life. It's the Word of God, and it contains the ultimate truth of life. While talking to his disciples, Jesus said in John 16, 33, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus says that as long as we live, trials will be there. Problems will come to us. We'll be tempted and tested. Even our Savior Christ himself was faced with problems. Being the Son of God, he also felt discouraged at some points. Remember his prayer of anguish while in the Garden of Gethsemane, where he asked for a cup of suffering to be taken from him. This shows how greatly beaten Jesus was feeling. Now, in the same manner, we will experience discouragements in life. We will feel pain. We will be hurt. But during those moments, God is our greatest comfort. He is the one you can trust with your feelings. He's the one you can tell how disappointed you feel for not making it to the competition finals, having practiced day and night. He is the one you can talk to anytime, any day, about how bad you're feeling about your business, your grades, your spouse, your children, your family, and everything that's weighing you down. You see, God is a refuge, a stronghold for us. He takes us with our broken hearts and He heals us. He embraces us with His arms and makes us feel secure. He says, Come to me, all those who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take to him your discouragement, your pain, your sorrow, your failures. Jesus says that we will face troubles as we live in this world, but he doesn't leave us there. He doesn't just give us a bitter pill to swallow without a cure. He gives a message of hope, and that is that despite all the hardships, we can have peace in him. Despite the discouragement that you're feeling right now, despite the great loss, you can have peace in Jesus. This is the kind of peace that Paul talked about in Philippians 4, 7, a peace that surpasses all human understanding. When you let God be the refuge you run to during hard times, you will experience this supernatural peace. It's his promise to us. The Bible says in Psalms 34, 18, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. There is no worse feeling than to put all your efforts into something and fail terribly. That is the greatest discouragement someone can feel. Often, it results from us proving a point that we can do something without anybody's help. 
we can do this without asking for a hand, so that we can take pride in, I did this on my own. I didn't ask for anybody's help. And when that thing has failed, we feel so discouraged and heartbroken, we have no idea what to do next. Now, it's a dangerous way of living to attempt to do life on your own. Isaiah says that those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is a promise that we all proclaim. I shall walk and not faint. I shall soar like eagles. I shall do this and this. Yet there are times that we fail to recognize the condition attached to it. It's not an absolute, but it's only fulfilled to those who fulfill the condition attached to it. The condition is that you trust and wait upon the Lord. Quit trying to use your own power, but rely on God to show you the way, to guide you. This verse before says that the youth grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall. You may not like to hear that young can get tired, that they they can fall. You see yourself as being powerful, energetic, and capable of doing great things all by yourself. But the truth is, without God, you will fail, and you will feel discouraged. You want to soar high like an eagle? Then depend on God. You want to walk without getting faint? God is your answer. Someone said that the problem with life is that it's so daily. It's so regular that we can't evade it. Every day we must wake up and tackle what it brings our way. And how great it would be if we could do this daily thing called life without getting tired. How amazing does that sound, to always be up to every task that comes our way, yet not tire. To fall a million times, yet rise up again every time we do. With renewed strength and energy. It sounds appealing, right? It's not too good to be true. You see, every word that comes from God is true, and it must happen. So, hey, it is possible. To run without wearing out, to walk without fainting, and to soar high like the eagles. But only when you have God. Only when you have Jesus as the source of your strength. God has the power, and He can give you the power if you let Him. Jesus overcame so that we can also overcome. Overcome the discouragement, the disappointment, the loss of drive in life, the pain, everything. Yet to receive this great power of God, you must let go of something. We must give something in exchange for His strength. All you need to do is give God your discouragement so that He can fill you with His strength. Give Him your pain so that He can give you His joy. Give Him your worry so that in return you can receive His heavenly peace. Give Him your anxiety about the future so that He can give you the assurance that all things are working out for your own good just as He promised. You can't run without growing weary, walk without getting faint, unless you've given surrender to God. He cannot fill your life with peace if you've filled it with worry, stress, anxiety, and all manner of things. You must leave room for God to fill you with His grace, to fill you with the peace He has promised, to encourage you when you're feeling down. One of the very interesting paradoxes of the life of a believer is how God uses pain to uplift us. The Bible records many people in their suffering and discouragement, but God was able to do something so great in their lives nobody had imagined. Your discouragement could be God's way of performing a great miracle in your life. Now, instead of lamenting about how bitter your life has become, turn that into a moment of worship. Instead of counting how many reasons you have to feel how you're feeling, make them a list of things you're thanking God for. In your lowest moments, seek to connect with God. Instead of running away from Him, find Him at all means. Make Him your safe haven when life seems to be beating you. And don't just go to Him with complaints. Instead, thank Him, praise, worship, and glorify Him. Sing of His wondrous deeds in your life. Turn your pain and discouragement into something that will strengthen your relationship with God. And hey, it's not living in denial of the great pain that you're feeling inside your heart. You see, it's not about pretending that the situation's not there, and it's not about running away from your problems. It only means that even though you're going through a hard time, you are strong enough to shift your gaze from the problem to the God you serve. It means staying blinded to the size of the Goliath before you and seeing the great God inside you. You're not denying that you're feeling awfully hurt by your failure, but you are at peace because God is working things out for you. That's what faith is all about.
It's the kind of faith that Isaiah is talking about, the faith that will keep you strong, the faith that will see you rise above every struggle, every setback, every discouragement, and make you soar high like an eagle, the faith that turns your worry into worship and your pain into praise. More often, discouragement comes with a spirit of fear. You feel afraid of setting up another business, carrying another pregnancy. You're afraid of resitting your exam. Attempting a thing once and failing at it can make one never try it again. That's why some people are never able to bounce back from the setbacks of life. Now, just because you were disappointed before doesn't mean that you will be disappointed for the rest of your life. The Bible says that though a righteous man falls down seven times, he will rise again. Do not be afraid. Fear is the language of the devil. It's an ungodly spirit. 2 Timothy 1.7 affirms that you have not been given a spirit of fear, but that of courage and self-control. Do not quit yet. Yes, you failed once, but this time around, you're not trying on your own. You felt discouraged before, but this time around, you are grounded on God. You were using your own power, but this time around, you are relying on God. He is the biggest tower you can run to during troubles and your comforter during discouraging moments. Seek refuge in Him.